Newton's law of universal gravitation. Every object in the universe attracts every other object with the gravitational force. So if we have two objects with masses m1 and m2, the distance between the two masses is r. If I have a unit vector uh, r hat that is pointing from mass 1 to mass 2, from particle 1 to particle 2, I will see that there will be a force on uh, the particle with mass m1, on particle 1, that is force exerted by particle 2 on particle 1. And you can see that this force is towards particle 2. And similarly, there will be the uh, corresponding force on particle 2. This is force exerted by particle 1 on particle 2. Uh, and it is directed towards particle 1. So this attractive force between the two particles uh, is uh, has a magnitude that is given by a gravitational, universal gravitational constant G multiplied with the product of the masses M1, M2 divided by the square of the distance between the two masses. So this gravitational constant G has a numerical value 6.674 10 to the minus 11 newtons meter square per kilogram square. So this has to be in newtons. So you can see that newtons meter square, meter squares will cancel, kilogram squares will cancel, and the force will come out in newtons as expected. So this gravitational constant G is known as the universal gravitational constant. So, and this is Newton's law of universal gravitation. Once again, this R12 hat is directed from object 1 to object 2, uh, and it's a unit vector, and F12 means its force exerted uh, by object 1 on object 2. So F12 acts on object 2, force exerted by 2 on 1 acts on 1 and these two form a force couple and according to Newton's third law they are equal in magnitude opposite in direction. So this is basically an action reaction situation here. F2 1 is minus F1 2 given by Newton's third law action reaction. So if we write uh, this force as a vector, F12, force exerted by uh, object 1 and object 2, is minus gm1 m2 over r square r12 hat. So force ex exerted by uh, object 1 on object 2 is in minus r12 hat direction. So it is pointing towards m1 or it is in r21 hat direction. Okay. So, uh, and the force, ex force exerted by object 2 uh, on object 1, F2, 1, will be G, M1, M2 over R square in plus R1, 2 hat direction. All right. So, therefore, the magnitude of the gravitational force exerted by the Earth, earth and, an, and a mass m at the Earth's surface will be given by, so one of the objects is the Earth, the other object is the uh, object with mass m that is at the surface of the Earth. Now, if we are at the surface of the Earth, distance between the two masses will be equal to the radius of the Earth. So the gravitational force on an object at the Earth's surface will be equal to g mass of the Earth times m divided by radius of the Earth square. Now what is mass of the Earth? It is 5.97 10 to 24 kilograms. Radius of the Earth is approximately 6,370 kilometers and this is equal to the weight of the object basically m times g. So this g, the gravitational acceleration, is uh, the universal uh, gravitational constant g, mass of the Earth divided by radius of the Earth square, which has a numerical value approximately equal to 9.8 meters per second square. As you can see, this gravitational acceleration is uh, strictly correct at the Earth's surface, and if we are at, at a, a height h from the Earth's surface, the distance between the center of the Earth and the object will change, so it will become Re plus h parentheses squared. Okay. 
Let's look at an example. Now, <clears throat> three point three kilogram billiard balls are placed on a table at the corners of a right triangle. So we have a right triangle here, M1, M2, and M3 are at the corners of a right triangle. The sides of the triangle are of lengths A equals 0.4 meter, B equals 0.3 meter, C equals 0.5 meter. Okay, so 3, 4, 5 triangle. Calculate the gravitational force vector. All right. The gravitational force vector on the cue ball designated M1. Okay, so on M1, resulting from the other two balls, as well as the magnitude and direction of this force. Okay, so I have three objects with masses, uh, equal masses. M1 equals M2 equals M3 equals 0 0.3 kilograms. The distance between 1 and 2 is 0 0.4 meters. The distance between 1 and 3 is 0 0.3 meters. And the distance between 2 and 3 is 0 0.5 meters. Okay. So, let me rewrite this. This is 0 0.3 meters and C is 0 0.5 meters. So, what I would like to know is the force on the ball with mass M1. Okay, so let's look at the forces M1 feels. So, I have M1 feeling a gravitational force from M2. This is force exerted by 2 on 1, pointing towards M2. And it also feels an attractive force from M3, force exerted by 3 on 1, pointing towards M3. Okay, so if I call this axis x-axis, this axis y-axis, I can write Newton's law of universal gravitation a force exerted by 2 on 1, F2-1, is the universal gravitational constant G, M1, M2, divided by the distance between them squared. So this is divided by A squared. And it's pointing towards M2. So it's in J hat direction. So this is 6.67. 10 to minus 11, so that was our gravitational constant. Let's ignore this 4. Um, and we have two equal masses, 0.3 kilograms, 0.3 times 0.3, divided by the distance between them, a squared, which is 0 0.4 parentheses squared. So I find that the vector f21 is 3.75 times 10 to minus 11 newtons in j hat direction so it's pointing towards the object two the second ball now the other force was f31 uh, f31 is the universal gravitational constant g the two product of the two masses m1 m3 divided by the distance between them squared b squared so this gives me 6.67 times 10 to minus 11 0 0.3 squared 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 divided by b squared and remember b was 0 0.3 so this is also 0 0.3 squared and it is in I hat direction. It is pointing towards M3. So I find that F31 is equal to 6.67 times 10 to minus 11 newtons in I hat direction. So these are the two forces acting on the first uh, ball. Okay, so... All I have to do is to add up these two contributions. 
F1 is force on one is force exerted by two on one plus force exerted by three on one. And uh, this will be F1 equals 6.67 I hat plus 3.75 J hat times 10 to minus 11 newtons. 10 to minus 11 newtons. So this is a very, very small force that this ball feels due to the presence of the other two balls. So this is rather small. So what is the magnitude of this force? It's just a square root of x component squared plus y component squared and the angle it makes with the positive x direction would be f1y divided by f1x. But basically having written uh, F1 in terms of its x and y components, we have calculated the gravitational force factor. So these two informations, the magnitude and the angle uh, with respect to the x-axis are inherent in this uh, vector expression. Okay, so this was a simple application of uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation, which states that two objects with masses M1, M2 will attract each other with a force of magnitude G, gravitational, universal gravitational constant, M1, M2 over R squared. R is the distance between the two masses. M1, M2 are the uh, masses of part objects 1 and 2, respectively. Uh, the force uh, exerted on one is in, op in the opposite direction of force exerted uh, by one on two. So, so this is going to be force exerted by one on two. This is going to be force exerted by two on one. And they are related by Newton's third law, action, reaction. And for the case of the Earth's surface, we have um, the gravitational force equals g times mass of the earth mass of the object divided by radius of the earth squared which gives us the gravitational acceleration g m e over r e squared 9.8 meters per second square which is true for the uh, object at the surface so by the way the radius of the earth is 6370 kilometers roughly 6400 kilometers mass of the earth is 5.97 10 to 24 or roughly 6 times 10 to 24 kilograms uh, these are important numbers to know and uh, for this example, we have seen three balls, billiard balls, with equal masses uh, forming a 345, 345 right triangle. We calculated the total force vector, gravitational force vector on M1, by considering the attractive force exerted by 2 on 1, exerted by 3 on 1, uh, separately, and we can find our uh, vector force on 1, as the sum of F21 plus F31 exerted by 2 on 1 and 3 on 1. And uh, we see that the answer that we get is rather small in the 10 to minus 11 Newton range.